Ahsoka is coming very soon, and we already know Thrawn is going to be a big focus as the overarching villain. But what else will be happening in the series? And what does this interview with Mark Hamill mean for the future of Star Wars movies and shows? Buckle up, because we have some theories. Welcome to Star Wars Uplink, your place for everything Star Wars gaming, the TV shows, and the movies. Let's jump in. Just you reconsider playing that message for him. We are very, very, very close to Ahsoka coming out. Mm -hmm. We are, honestly, I, I think we're close to two months, maybe two and a half months away from it. Because it's rumored to at least be more towards the end of August. I've heard the, the dates of August 26th. I've heard August 29th. I've heard August 28th. There's a lot of different days that have been out there, but as far as we can see, it's definitely leaning more towards the later half of August, which I think would kind of make sense. Mm -hmm. They would get the, the time period out there by the time episodes really start to come to an end. Skeleton Crew is supposed mm -hmm. to be coming out. I think Skeleton Crew is rumored to be coming out in December. Ah. So if we have mm -hmm. August for, I think, what, eight episodes, 12 episodes, yeah. something along those lines, eight to 12 weeks, that gets us right to the end of December. And I think that would kind of match up for... I, I don't think they want a reality where they have two live-action shows going on at the same time. Yeah, I think that would not make them happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they're slowing down, as far as we know, Disney is looking to slow down the number of TV shows that they're producing specifically for Disney+, Plus, as those numbers have been dropping, and they're looking for more high returns when it comes to the investments around things. And Star Wars has definitely been stepping it up in terms terms of the TV side of things. And I think they're going to continue to do that as they expand and find the different areas of the galaxy they want to expand in the movies. But that all being said, definitely want to get the best bang for your buck when it comes to the Star Wars TV shows. And I don't think they want a, a time period either where it feels like it's constantly a Star Wars show going on. Mm -hmm. So I think they also need to play that balance. So I could totally see Skeleton Group getting pushed to next year, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if Ahsoka doesn't get pushed back also oh really yeah i mean why I, do you say that i don't know i just have a funny feeling about it just because we <laughs> haven't gotten a strict date yet yeah it's august yeah it's just august, august. Eh. it's like that could be mm -hmm. the very very end of august like that could even be beginning of september mm -hmm. well it definitely makes sense i think there is an there is a possibility that it could get delayed there's a couple things that make me say that one is the writer's strike that's going mm -hmm. on while ahsoka is all done shot and is in post-production now they could just say hey there's a lot of uh, hatred towards big studios right now do we want to really catch the heat or do we want to play it safe and just wait until things die down a little bit the other thing is uh dave filoni when he was on stage for the lucasfilm panel at star wars celebration he was very hesitant around certain things like mm -hmm. he was like oh crap i still have a lot of work to do on this and the date's coming up soon it's like just stop saying august it's making me really think about my deadline um, and this is the first thing that he'll have really heavily produced on his own when it That's comes it. to writing all of the episodes, directing some of the episodes, and really producing a show based on a character he created. Mm, true. So there's a lot riding on it. I could see many different things happening. But the question I think we're all wondering is like, what the heck is this show even going to be about? Because we yeah. honestly don't know otherwise, <laughs> other than Ahsoka's going to be there. Members of Rebels are going to be there, and Thrawn is going to be there. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> we, we don't know what Ahsoka's doing. We don't know. Obviously, she's uh -huh. looking for Thrawn, as we know, from season two of uh, Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. We see her in Book of Boba Fett, and she's a lot more chill, just kind of like l trying to learn things from Luke and just see what's going on, on on his side of things. But from what we know, her mission is like Thrawn. I guess. Although... I'm I'm hoping that we get some kind of backstory as to why. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. Or how she got here, honestly. Yeah, like, I need these puzzle pieces put back together because, I, also, why is she with Luke? What's mm -hmm. that about? Why yeah. is she so, like, Thrawn at like, the end yeah. of, what was Where's it? Where's Grand Admiral Thrawn? Yeah, like, it was, like, very strong 
Like she came off really strong. So I'm not, I need some puzzles mm-hmm. pieces put in here because I'm we have, not yeah. sure why. Obviously in Rebels, there's the end. Spoiler alert for Rebels. Towards the end. I, I say spoiler alert. I honestly haven't even watched the episodes. I just know <laughs> it from researching videos. But at the end, we see Ezra take Thrawn into the wild lands and wild space and outer reaches of the galaxy. So that might be part of the reason that... Ahsoka's looking for Thrawn, but I wonder what really sparked the whole idea that Thrawn is alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's the story of this big bad, you know? Mm-hmm. like What's the motivation here? Like, yeah, we, how we do you s- know? Yeah. In in the trailer, we see her in the world between worlds, mm-hmm. and we have Ray Stevenson's character who sadly passed away very recently, oh, wow. within the last week or two, I believe. Mm. Uh, died at age 58. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was in a lot of different things, and uh, it really sucks to have, have lost that as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing his character in this. Mm-hmm. And it's going to have so much more weight now that we know that that was one of the last roles that he did. Mm-hmm. But like we see, as far as I can tell, he's in the world between worlds. Ahsoka's in the world between worlds. And it looks like they're fighting each other in the world between Definitely worlds. Definitely feels like a confrontation. Yeah. Some sort of rift going on mm-hmm. there. But also world between worlds. Like what are they... What are yeah. we addressing here? Is like, everyone in the world between worlds yeah, now? Yeah, does everyone know about this? How do we? How are we getting in here? Because last time it was like through a mural, so mm-hmm. um, which we've seen leaks of the mm-hmm. mural, so we yes. know that it's going to be there at some point. Yeah, I'm just so confused. I don't know. I don't know what exactly we're getting ourselves into <laughs> with this. Also, why is she so? on about Thrawn when what about Ezra like it seems like he's still missing Mm because we get that really quick moment of Sabine looking at Ezra's little hollow I'm assuming it was just a picture of him and not like a message it might have been a message it might have been a message but I think it's just a picture of him yeah so what's that about they've obviously had contact with him Hmm. right because that's an updated image of Ezra it's an older version of Ezra Mm -hmm. than we see in Rebels because some time has passed since that happened the end of rebels takes place before a new hope and then we have the entire original trilogy and then the mando verse takes place five years after return of the jedi so we don't have confirmation of when the ahsoka series is set Mm. but we assume at least that it's in the mando timeline because Mm -hmm. we hear ahsoka say in season two of mandalorian where's grand admiral thrawn right the assumption that we have is this is based after all of the events of the original trilogy and mando seasons one two maybe three and book of boba fett i almost wonder if this is gonna be like kind of in the timeline of mando like not necessarily after but like yeah i mean yeah i could see it picking up after season two but then we wouldn't is that before or after she's like where's that grand admiral that's when she says grand admiral Hmm. but then we wouldn't get the answers of like Mm -hmm. why she wants i mean we we would we could see flashbacks we can see uh illusions honestly do we even need that information or is it just let's see what's going on with ahsoka at this point Mm. so i think there's a lot of opportunity there for varying levels of storytelling Mm -hmm. i'm just fascinated to see what direction and another piece that we got here is uh tamura morrison is rumored to be reprising his role as the clones specifically captain rex oh so we'll be seeing his Ooh. character picked back up. Maybe it's in a flashback. Maybe it is after mm-hmm. the timeline of or during the timeline of Mandalorian. I think it'd be very... I, I love mm-hmm. seeing... When I first saw the episode of Rebels where it had old the old clones... <laughs> honestly, yep. it was so... It's fun to me now when I first watched it. I was like, ah, oh, this is dumb. I love it now. Yeah. Like it, it works so well. I love picking back up with these characters that we know so well and seeing how they're doing post clone wars post the original like right before the original trilogy is what we see them in in the rebels show there's a lot that can be happening there yeah and would this kind of tie things in with what we've been seeing for Bad Batch? It could. I, I know we've had a lot of correlations between Bad Batch and Mando that we saw in season three and season two, uh, specifically with the clones and how mm-hmm. that's working. Mount Tantus, as well as, oh, what's his name? The uh, really scary looking dude, Royce mm-hmm. Hemlock. 
I think he he might show up depending on what happens with season two of Bad or season three of Bad Batch, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know if he lives past that. We'll see. But there's a it. lot of these different pieces that we're seeing mm-hmm. across the timelines. Cloning is definitely a thing that's going to be happening because we see clone of Palpatine in the sequel trilogy. Mm-hmm. We see all we see a clone of Moff Gideon or many clones of Moff yeah. Gideon. So we've got this cloning theme going throughout. Mm-hmm. And now we have rumors of Rex coming yeah. into Ahsoka. We see Thrawn mentioned in um season three of Mando. Mm-hmm. And he's all all the way in the background. Like he doesn't oh, show yeah. up for any of the meetings. Yeah. He doesn't do anything. This is he's like pulling the strings in the background. Puppet master style. Exactly. And I think there's a lot of different things that could be going on in Ahsoka. I just wonder what the overarching theme is. Because mm-hmm. I think with the rumored title of the movie, Heir to the Empire, we have to see Thrawn live until that movie. Right. Otherwise, oh, yeah. it doesn't make sense to have that title because it's. They say it in. I was I think it's Mando season three. Mm-hmm. They say he's the heir to the empire. Like that is, that's Thrawn. We all know that's Thrawn. Yeah, it's no question. So we know he can't die. He, it would be boring for him to be captured and then just escape. Yeah. So I think maybe the the whole reason for this Ahsoka show is to get further along. And see what Thrawn is up to. Yeah. To set up for the ultimate movie that we see probably in what, 2025, if I'd have to guess. Mm -hmm. I would assume at least by like the end of Ahsoka, we're going to see some battles or some sort of head head Mm -hmm. to head combat or whatever. Um, Or a Thrawn uh, devised mission or mm -hmm. something along those lines, I think could definitely show up. Yeah. We're going to see something and we're. Well, we better see something, but, yeah. <laughs> but we need Thrawn. Definitely not Thrawn's destruction. If mm-hmm. it has Thrawn's destruction, I'm going to be really confused yeah, and I'm really going, disappointed. <laughs> yeah, just quit Star Wars. Podcast just, is over. Hands up. <laughs> I, I I hope that they don't waste this moment because Thrawn is so impactful and he's honestly such a good motivator and such a ominous, skillful villain that I think there's. M- there are so many options that they could go with because we know Thrawn in Legends. We know Thrawn in canon. We know Thrawn in Rebels. We know what Thrawn is all about. Like mm-hmm. he is very analytical. He is very, he's, he's called a, like a mastermind genius when it comes to tactical combat and pulling things off. Even in the Heir to the Empire series of books, like mm-hmm. he is, he's not Palpatine because Palpatine has like the power side of things like that's one of the main fears with Palpatine he has something incredibly different which is just mindset and motivation and skill and intelligence and empathy like he understands yeah. people and mm-hmm. he knows how to find yeah like he's he a, knows how to read art yeah so like and he, that's a big part yeah. of why he's so <laughs> effective in his job is because he can understand the cultures that he's looking to fight mm-hmm. isn't there, there i think there's a quote from thrawn that's like you can understand a lot about a culture through their art it's like that's deep and it came from a star wars <laughs> yeah yep i also wonder if they're going to do anything with the chiss ascendancy I hope so. That would be freaking awesome. We'd have to. like, We have to see something because Thrawn Mm -hmm. is still very tied to that. Yeah. So that's his old, like, that's his master plan mm -hmm. is to use the Empire to fuel the Chiss Ascendancy. Yeah. So that's his goal. Spoiler alert, but that's his goal. What's going on here? (laughs) Need to know. Lots of things to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am very excited to see where Ahsoka, the Rebels characters, we know Hera's going to be there. We know Sabine's going to be there. We know. Ezra is going to be in there. We've seen Zeb in Mandalorian season three, so there's possibility for him to be there. We could even see Kanan when it comes to Ezra's perspective. Like we could totally mm. see him guiding Ezra from the Force. True, that could be a possibility. There's a lot that can go on when we talk about the Ahsoka show, and I love that we don't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. We've seen the trailer. 
It looks awesome. It has a ton of lightsaber wielders for some reason. They don't look like they're the Inquisitors or the Inquisitorious, no. anything like that. So what are they doing? Maybe it's part of the World Between Worlds or, or something along Thrawn's plan to utilize the World Between Worlds. Like that could totally be something that's happening here. Or Ahsoka's plan to use the World Between Worlds. Or Ahsoka backfires and releases a lot of dark side wielders and red lightsaber wielders. Mm-hmm. I'll put them that way because... <laughs> Who knows if they're specifically the dark side or the Sith or anything like that. But she could totally be opening the world between worlds and then opens up a whole mess for herself when Mm -hmm. it comes to releasing these lightsaber wielders. Yep. That's something that could be pretty cool. And it's also like that'd be good character growth for her. Like using this very weird and kind of sketchy thing, which is the world between worlds Mm -hmm. and like really messes with timelines and could be huge destruction of the galaxy, really. Yeah. What does it look like for her to have repercussions of utilizing that? Mm-hmm. Could be part of that story. Now, though, we, we mentioned Book of Boba Fett. We mentioned Ahsoka. We mentioned Luke. Mark Hamill had an interview here recently mm-hmm. and was talking about the future of Luke's character and him portraying Luke as a character. Quote, People say, oh, now you're going to be able to do a whole series of Luke post Return of the Jedi. I said, I don't think so. First of all, they don't need to tell those stories. But if they do, they could get an age appropriate actor. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is really fun because I think this is what we've all been wanting to happen. We never wanted Luke to be a CGI character. Mm -hmm. We never wanted, like, I think it's cool that they consult and talk about how Luke would approach different things with Mark Hamill. I think that's great guiding force. Especially, yeah. (laughs) Especially after his uh, sassiness when it comes to the last jedi because he wasn't happy with the portrayal of luke he wanted luke to be more of the force for good in star wars and more so what we know of luke as in legends of like okay he's gonna do the right thing he may make mistakes but it's ultimately gonna be because he's trying to do the right thing Mm. that's how mark hamill perceives luke And I think it's good to have that guiding light, especially in the TV shows where you're expanding things a lot more. But how how the heck do they pull this off in Book of Boba Fett? Well, currently they have Mark Hamill do and act a role. They do the whole scene with Mark Hamill. Then they get the lookalike actor to do that whole scene again. And then they special effects work on things in the background. I'm not a special effects guy. I'm not going to say how they do it because I don't know how they do it. But they use Mark Hamill's performance as a reference. And they use the lookalike to maybe deep fake it more accurately. Hmm. Yeah, Fascinating. But I know I'm pretty sure deep faking is involved because if you look at those scenes, they are very careful of either shooting Luke from the back, not including his head. Like they're trying to use it. They're trying to do it in as like a minimal of a way as possible. Mm-hmm. So that what make that's what makes me think that that's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, they got such backlash, mm-hmm. I think, from Mandalorian season yeah, one. Two. two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. So I can understand why they're careful. But I do appreciate that an actor is actually coming out and being like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Maybe just get someone new. <laughs> yeah. I think it's interesting, too, that he says, first of all, they don't need to tell those stories. Mm-hmm. When Heir to the Empire is literally, it was marketed as, it was honestly the birth of what we know the extended universe and Legends content to be. Oh. And it was the continuation after Return of the Jedi. Like, mm-hmm. it was the next trilogy. Thrawn was the big bad in that trilogy. Mm-hmm. And we see... Han, Luke, Leia, Lando, Mon Mothma even. Wow. We see all these characters in here and they're there. They're the young version. They're the couple years after Return of the Jedi characters mm-hmm. that we know and love. And they are just continuing that legacy. But to hear Mark Hamill say, yeah, I don't know if they need to tell those stories. What is heir to the Empire in this phase of Star Wars? Mm-hmm. And I think, honestly, it, it's the the foundation of this movie is the Mandalorian. Hmm. Yeah. It is what Mandalorian, what, what the Mandalorian set up. So how do they take what the Mandalorian set up, Book of Boba Fett built on top of, Ahsoka's building on top of, Skeleton Crew's built on top of, mm. 
all of these different groups and TV shows and maybe even the movies are building on top of, how do they mix that all together while also keeping true to what we know of as heir to the empire? And I think that ultimately, if they do, it's rumored right now that that's what the movie is going to be called. But if they do open that floodgate, they're going to open themselves up to a lot of criticism of, oh, this isn't like the book. Or, mm-hmm. well, the book was better, or the movie's better. Like, you're going to have both sides of those th- those people. One one person is going to enjoy the book series better. And that's definitely their right. And I think it's fair to say. But the other group are going to enjoy the movie more. And not even know what the book is. Mm -hmm. So how do they strike that balance? Oh boy. This is kind of a sticky situation. Mm -hmm. If you really think (laughs) about it. It's. It's going to be real interesting. Because we already have had Luke. A younger Luke. Yeah. In these series. Or in this. These TV shows and stuff. So he's already made an appearance. Mm -hmm. And if he's not a part of this. Which he is a part of in the books anyway if he's not a part of this in any way Mm -hmm. and why wouldn't he be a part of it honestly yeah he's luke skywalker he's trying to set up as we know in book of boba fett the next jedi order Mm -hmm. he's got a jedi academy that he's trying to train force sensitives why wouldn't he want to bring down one of the biggest forces in the galaxy to ensure a good future for his future Jedi. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. I don't know what it, what he means by what he said. Mark mm-hmm. Hamill, that yeah. is. Like, hmm. And again, I think they should recast. Mm-hmm. I think if they're going to have Luke be a bigger role, they can't just deep fake him. They can't have mm-hmm. that because they need the emotion mm-hmm. and they need the ability to do more than just like, oh, we can't we can't do that scene because it's going to require six months of work to make it look natural. Right. No. Recast. New guy. And I know that there's been a lot of stipulation, especially around like the Han Solo movie. Mm-hmm. And which I love all Narenreich as yeah. Like, as Han Solo, he did such a good job of capturing young Harrison Ford. Yeah. But made it his own, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it fit the character. He wasn't trying to do impersonation of Harrison Ford. He tried to play Han Solo. Right. So, it's kind of, it's a hard situation because we've already seen a Mark Hamill Mm -hmm. deep fake Luke throughout these different TV shows and series. So, what is it going to look like? if Mark Hamill doesn't come back, Mm -hmm. you know, like what, what are they going to do? Are they going to recast? Really? Are they going to just be like, no, 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 you're going to stay on until we get this done. Like, or maybe, (laughs) Hmm. I don't know. But then you open the whole can of worms with young Harrison Ford. Is Leia going to be a part of that? Right. Carrie Fisher is dead, Mm -hmm. but they utilize some deep fake technology and stuff. And complete digital recreation in Rogue One mm-hmm. for young Leia, her daughter Billy portrayed her in Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. So they could do that option. Like they could really recast her. But then we've also seen, I mean, kind of a similar thing, but with Tarkin, mm-hmm. I mean, just like at um, Rogue One, Yeah. how much they did with him. That was fascinating. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we, what are we, we going to do? What, yeah. what direction are we going in, guys? I think they just need to choose. <laughs> uh-huh. They need to decide, are we going to use these characters more in the story? And if so, they need to recast. But mm-hmm. if they're only going to be coming in like for moments, like is Leia going to be in there with Mon Mothma for just like a little bit? Because Leia, as we know it in Legends, works very closely with Mon Mothma. Mm-hmm. It works very closely in the politics side of creating the new republic i don't know it, but it's still fascinating that mark hamill's like yeah just recast me it's yeah. fine like uh-huh. cool glad we got your th- approval <laughs> i think that's fair i think we need to see the next generation of star wars fans mm-hmm. have their luke we don't have to constantly bring back all of the characters like i think it's fair to recast and to retell stories that might be a little bit different than we remember because they're new actors but i think as long as they capture the role and look close enough I think that I think it'll work. Yeah, I definitely think that's true. But 
again, on the point of he doesn't think that those stories need to be told. Mm -hmm. Really? Do you agree? Do you think so? Or is it just a matter of like, let's not un- unearth the like legends mm-hmm. debacle here? I think they need to tell new stories with Luke because they have mm-hmm. a different Luke. Like we know yeah. Luke's end point, which is the last Jedi and him being a very sour, <sighs> grieving, mm-hmm. um, somewhat angry character Mm -hmm. so much so like so fearful that he would try to kill his nephew yeah we know that's his end point so they i think they need to help bridge that gap Hmm. of like how do we get from luke who's willing to do anything for the galaxy and do anything for his family Hmm. how does he get to this point where he wants to kill his nephew yeah. I think they need to bridge that gap a little bit. Maybe it's not in Heir to the um, Empire. Maybe it's not in this Mando verse. Maybe it's something else. But I think they need to bridge that gap a little bit. That would have to be so well curated, like so mm-hmm. emotionally in depth that I don't think we've or seen honestly, that. Or honestly, just p- bits and pieces, like have him show up in different areas, like show mm-hmm. him as it's the progression. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we need a whole series of like mm-hmm. how. How does Luke Skywalker become a murder machine? Yeah. No, I think we need to touch base throughout the decades as we get closer to that point. That hint at his discovery of like, okay, man, the dark side is coming. (laughs) That's what it was. Like Mm -hmm. it was a moment of anger and aggression and fear of what Mm -hmm. the dark side came over. Mm Mm-hmm. It wasn't like him as a character, but how do we get to the point where like he's not going to touch the dark side at all to, okay, he took over. Yeah. It's like, I scared. I don't know. I can understand um, Mark Hamill's saying that, that it's like, no, just don't even, because mm-hmm. almost, it's always going to be better just leaving it to your imagination, you know, like just yeah. that, just knowing that it, he got there, it's like, okay. We can kind of understand that. Yeah. Like it, th- that bridge is easy enough to cross. So to explore more might just open more can of worms. We'll see. They're definitely going to be bringing more things into Star Wars. So we'll see what direction they go. But let us know your thoughts on what we discussed today. What do you think the ultimate story is for Ahsoka? And who do you want to see recast Luke Skywalker? It's a, it's a big thing. That's a huge burden. Yes. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below or contact at uplinkpodcast.com or reach out on social. We're at Star Wars Uplink wherever you can find us. As always, hey, thanks for listening to the podcast and may the force be with you. <laughs>